Hey everyone, Nate here. So with the Dune movie, uh, just a week from premiering in North America, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the book that the movie is based on. Um, well, I guess more accurately, I wanted to compare the currently available editions of the book because if you're a nerd like me, you um, might care about these sorts of things. I don't know. Also, I kind of thought that after you see the movie, you might catch Dune Fever. So you might want to follow up by reading the book that the movie is based on. I've been hearing that the movie is phenomenal. So a lot of people are probably going to get caught up in the whole Dune universe uh, like people did after the Lord of the Rings movies came out. If you know me, you know I love books. And honestly, different types of books provide me with different reading experiences. Like it could be this very same book, but I'll have a completely different experience if I read it in paperback, if I read it in leather bound hardcover, versus if I read it in cloth bound hardcover, versus if I read it on an e-reader. Since Dune is such a classic, uh, there are several editions of the book that are currently in circulation and available for purchase. And since it's one of my absolute favorite books, uh, I have quite a few of them. Also, for my latest read through of the book, I decided to read a chapter out of one edition and then the next chapter out of another edition and then the next chapter out of yet another edition and so on and so forth. Kind of just rotating through each of the editions of the book that I own so that I can get a feel for uh, how each one kind of reads. Um, so here's how I felt about them. First, I have this trade paperback edition. Uh, this was the cover of Dune uh, kind of when I was growing up, probably when I was in high school and college, this is what the cover looked like. So unfortunately, this edition is not widely available. Um, I think you might still be able to find it, but probably not for a decent price for a paperback. When I read from this particular edition, um, the feeling that I'm kind of hit with is certainly nostalgia. It's also a pretty nice paperback. Um, you know, it's got a, a, a pretty gorgeous cover um, with this image of a desert and what looks like Paul Atreides and Lady Jessica kind of traversing across the desert of Arrakis. The pages, while they have yellowed a little bit over the years, um, they, they're, they're nice and soft, which is kind of what you want in a paperback. They rest nicely. The book opens pretty easily without having to kind of crease the spine. Um, and in fact, um, over the years, the spine has suffered no creasing on, on this edition whatsoever. But you know what? I'll, I'll actually stop talking about this one because it's not one that you can really purchase. So the next edition that I have is uh, the current mass market paperback edition that uh, um, for me came with the full set of all six of Frank Herbert's Dune books. Um, now there are dozens of other Dune books uh, written by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, but we'll ignore those for now. So that's how I, uh, how I ended up with this edition. I got it as part of the collection of all six of Frank Herbert's Dune books. This is the only edition of the book I own that I haven't yet read. Um, well, at least that I've owned and opened. We'll get into that later. I haven't read it, but I can already tell it's not a great edition. Um, so as you can see, pages are pretty stiff. Um, they don't open very easily, kind of forcing you to sort of crease the spine in order to open the book for reading, which is not something that I love doing. I do like the cover artwork though, um, and it it fits quite nicely with the current collection of Frank Herbert Dune books, um, as it should, since it's a set. <laughs> though if you're looking for a cheap paperback copy or um, you want an affordable collection of all six of Frank Herbert's uh, Dune books, uh, this is obviously gonna be the edition for you. Before getting into the hardcover editions that I have, um, I do want to make a quick plug for e-readers. Uh, I've done a video on e-readers before, so I'll um, link to it up there. I won't go into great detail, uh, but I do want to say that I would highly recommend reading the book on an e-reader before reading it on your cell phone or your tablet. Um, so in addition to the light emission that I mentioned in that other video on e-readers, there's also the refresh rate to consider. So even when nothing is moving on your screen, the phone or tablet is refreshing anywhere between 60 and 120 times per second. Some high-end phones like my Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra will slow the refresh rate down to 
like 10 times per second uh, if the screen is, is um, stationary or nothing is happening on the screen. But that's still a bunch of times per second that the screen itself is refreshing, which is something that your eyes and your brain can pick up on, even if consciously you're not really aware of that happening. So uh, it's enough to give people a headache if they stare at their screen for too long. So an e-reader doesn't actually refresh until you turn the page. So um, you can see I have to turn the page and it's not even actually refreshing while I'm turning the page. Um, it might, let's see where it refreshes. Um, still not refreshing. So you don't get any screen refresh here until, you know what, I'll tap. And then tap again. And boom, now the screen refreshed. So that's a really nice feature of e-readers, which makes it so much easier on your eyes. Um, so my e-reader of choice is the Kobo Libra H2O, and I highly, highly recommend it. The first hardcover edition that I have is this Penguin Galaxy edition, which is a beautiful, kind of simple, elegant, minimalist design. It's part of the Penguin Galaxy collection, which puts together six of science fiction's greatest novels in a cohesive series that would look great on anyone's shelf. Uh, the other books in the series are The Once and Future King by T.H. White, Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein, 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke, The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, Neuromancer by William Gibson, and of course, Dune by Frank Herbert. While it is a gorgeous cover, um, I don't think I'd really recommend this edition to anyone. Um, the weight distribution is a little bit awkward when you're holding it for reading. The, uh, the pages are glue bound, so they don't don't rest nicely when you open the book so you kind of have to fight the pages when you're holding the book open and the spine has sharp edges which make for a, a very uncomfortable reading session so while you're holding the book the edges put pressure on your hand in an uncomfortable way longer reading sessions with the weight of the book um, are not terribly comfortable the only really good things that I have to say about the book are the front and back cover designs. The spine is um, rather boring, to be honest, unless you want the entire Penguin Galaxy collection to place on your shelf. It kind of looks a little bit drab. That is, unless you like absolutely love this sort of minimalist design. This edition is actually quite inexpensive for a special edition hardcover coming in at $25 US. Um, it's not the best hardcover deal you can find out there if you want a nice edition of Dune. I happen to find it at my local used bookshop for $15, so it was a, a definite pickup for me. The next hardcover edition of Dune that I have is the Barnes and Noble Leatherbound Classic Edition. Um, this is part of a series of books that Barnes and Noble carries. They're all beautiful display books to put up on your shelf and to flip through. Um, as you can see, the cover is absolutely beautiful. There's even some pretty stunning artwork um, on the end papers. We've got the front end papers, uh, a little some artwork depicting ornithopters. Um, on the back end papers, we have um, what looks like um, the exterior of a Fremen CH. The MSRP for this edition is $25 US. Um, so at that price, it's obviously not genuine leather. Uh, the cover is made from bonded leather, which makes it much less expensive than other types of leather that are commonly used for books like vellum or Morocco, calfskin or skiver. But the trade-off is that this isn't going to last. This cover's not going to last nearly as long as the other types of leather. Um, that said though, it is still a a gorgeous book. I would probably categorize reading from this as a luxurious reading experience. The weight is nicely distributed for the size of the book. Um, the spine is rounded, so the edges don't 
like cut into my hand while I'm reading. Unlike the Penguin Galaxy edition, which has glue bound pages, this binding is thread sewn. So the pages do sit nicely when you set the book down. And one nice feature of all of the Barnes and Noble leather bound classics is the inclusion of a ribbon bookmark. I truly don't understand why more hardcover books don't come with one of these built in. So as you can see, the pages are gilded in gold. So it looks stunning, but honestly, while reading, um, it can get a little bit annoying because gold dust, especially on your first, the few, first few times you open the book, gold dust will fly everywhere. It'll get stuck on your fingers and everything. I mean, this book is old enough now that um, when I'm kind of flipping through the pages, um, gold doesn't really get stuck. Oh, yeah, it does. Never mind. I do not as much as as when it was brand new, but gold still kind of gets stuck on, on my fingers when I flip through the pages. But having said that, it does look really nice. It's a beautiful display uh, book for sure. The pages are rather thin, so the text on the back of the page can be seen through the front. So, I mean, I know these are kind of nitpicky complaints, but I do want you to be aware in case those happen to be deal breakers for you, though there is one pretty large annoyance for me when it comes um, to not just Dune, but many of the Barnes and Noble leather bound classics. There are several typos throughout the book. Uh, this one in particular is immersion breaking, but I've, I've heard that it's been fixed in subsequent printings. There are still some typos that persist. So if you are interested in purchasing this, this edition, just know you are probably going to come across some typos. Though at $25, this is probably the best deal that you're going to find for Dune, for a hardcover edition of Dune at least. And Barnes & Noble often puts their leather bounds on sale. So you can sometimes find it for as cheap as $18. And if you're a Barnes & Noble member, uh, the discount does apply. It does really look great on the shelf, uh, especially if you have a bunch of the Barnes & Noble leather bound classics to display along with it. Though I have noticed recently that it's been out of stock at a number of Barnes & Noble locations. Um, so you might need to place an order for this one online. Uh, since it is a Barnes & Noble exclusive and you won't be able to search your local indie bookshop for it, unless it's a used bookshop, then you might get lucky. But I, I would recommend just going ahead. If you can't find it at your local Barnes & Noble, just uh, go ahead and look online for it. Uh, I'm guessing that a lot of people have been buying this edition up in anticipation of the movie coming out. The third hardcover edition that I have is the Ace Deluxe Edition. Um, now at an MSRP of $40 US, this is the most expensive one that I've read through, though not the most expensive one I own, more on that later. You might be able to find it for a bit cheaper though. Um, I happened to find it at one of my local indie bookshops, um, the Monkler Book Center for 36 US dollars. Now, despite the heftier price, this is probably the one hardcover edition so far that I can recommend without any caveats whatsoever, maybe aside from the price. While the Penguin Galaxy edition has issues with discomfort while holding and the spine is glue bound, so the pages don't really rest nicely. And then the Barnes and Noble edition is plagued with typos. This edition has none of the issues that come with the other two hardcover editions that I went over. Um, so let's take a look at the cover. It's got this beautiful metallic dust jacket with a stunning depiction of Muad'Dib, the eyes of the Ibad, as the Fremen say. The inside of the dust jacket has similarly beautiful artwork. depicting a Fremen in the background, the two moons of Arrakis, and what looks like Chani in the foreground holding her uh, her Chris knife. The front end papers have what looks like the interior of a Sietch with some Fremen walking around, and the back end papers have art depicting a sandworm with Muad'Dib standing there ready to confront the, the sandworm. The cover itself has 
an imprint of the famous line from the Litany Against Fear. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. And on the spine, the imprinted title is Gilded in Gold. Um, the pages are a bit thicker than the Barnes & Noble edition, but not quite as thick as the Penguin Galaxy edition. So the text isn't quite so visible through the pages, but when compared to the Penguin Galaxy, um, it is a little bit noticeable. Since the pages are stained and not gilded, uh, you won't have any gold dust flying around anywhere. The binding is thread sewn. So when you set the book down, the pages um, rest rather nicely and the spine is rounded which makes for a rather comfortable read overall when you're holding the book. So uh, if you're willing to go up to around $40 US, this is definitely the edition that I would recommend. Since it's the newest special edition of the book, it's probably going to be relatively easy to find at or near MSRP. Like I said, I found it for a few dollars cheaper. Um, so you might be able to find it for a little bit cheaper if you look around. Um, and since it's not exclusive to any one bookseller, you could probably find it at your uh, local indie bookshop like I did. Finally, there's this edition. <laughs> yep, it just arrived recently and it's a gift from my girlfriend. So I'm actually planning on opening it on my birthday, which isn't until a week after the movie premieres in North America. So um, be on the lookout for another video where I will show this book off and I'll do kind of like an overview of this edition. I'm really, really excited. If you know your Dune editions, if you know your book, like special editions, you recognize that company right there. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful and informative and gave you a little sense for what the different editions of Dune are like. If you are planning on buying a copy or if you already bought a copy, um, be sure to let me know in the comments which one you went with. And I hope you enjoyed the movie. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting so excited. Uh, I tried to temper my expectations but that's hard to do, especially since the movie already premiered outside of North America um, and it's getting a lot of praise. So that's only building my excitement even further. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.